retired Major League Baseball umpire John Hirschbeck joins us this morning. John, thank you so much for coming on. I was just curious with a great World Series going on if you miss being on the baseball diamond this time of year. You know, Bobby, I get asked that question all the time, and no, not since I walked away. 41 years of doing anything was enough, and, um, you know, seven years in the minor leagues and then 34 in the big leagues. When I left, I was ready to go. It, it was time, and I had had enough. It was time to come home and get more active with my hobbies and spend more time with my wife and daughter, so it's worked out great. Love being retired. Well, John, I mean, talk about leaving at the right time. I mean, Game 7 of the 2016 World Series, our BronxNet cameras were there to see that one. Got a chance to chat with you a little bit back then. And uh, what an epic, epic series that was as the Cubs, of course, come back and, you know, yeah. finally, finally end this 108-year drought of not winning a World Series. Uh, this, this World Series has been good, but I think that one goes down as one of the greatest of all time. After that World Series, I always said it'd be hard to beat that one because the games were exciting. Um, they were just it had everything, you know, especially game seven. Uh, your lifetime has really been remarkable. I know right now you have some items that are up for auction. We'll talk about that in a moment. But I, I really mm -hmm. think your life deserves either a book or a movie. I don't even think I could do justice to it this morning. Do you know if um, if your listeners, uh, like you said, we'll get into it later, but if they go to the magic of Michael dot com. There's uh, as you scroll down, there's articles and um, there was one written called The Umpire's Sons, and um, it was written shortly after our son John passed away. And um, it really, if we ever did a book and I'm talking to a few people, um, I want it to be the right author that writes it with us, just about dealing with life and tragedy and, and losing two of our children. Um, so that will be our goal, and that's that's definitely on the table. We're we're getting closer. As you mentioned, of course, losing two sons to a deadly disease, you and your lifetime uh, coming back to umpiring in the major leagues twice from cancer. Uh, just a remarkable career on the baseball diamond. The first the first years in the major leagues from '84 to '99 in the AL, and then of course fans, I think, getting a chance to see you in both leagues from uh, 2000 to 2016. You know what would be the story that you would want to share with our viewers this morning in terms of getting involved with this incredible auction that you have, because there's over 500 items, many things signed by some of the greatest players of all time, even some of the presidents that you've gotten a chance to see by being involved in the game of baseball, right. the game of baseball. And then of course it goes to such a great cause. Um, shortly after Michael passed away, he was 27. He died in April of 2014. Um, very, very unexpected shock um to say the least and although he always had seizures and that's what ultimately um caused him to pass away during his sleep that night but um friends of his came up to us and said we'd like to do something to honor michael's memory and we'd like to do a golf tournament from that it evolved into a dinner golf tur uh, a golf tournament and a dinner and um our first guest was joe torrey um just did a phenomenal job and uh, since then, we had Jim Leland. Two years ago, we had uh, Terry Francona and Jim Tomei. Um, so the Magical Michael came about, and we work closely with Akron Children's Hospital. We've donated over $250,000 since the Magical Michael came about. Um, our, our theme, our motto is, our mission statement is helping families endure the curveballs of life. And with that, We've done a lot of programs to help um, children, inner city children, um, underprivileged, and a lot with children with disabilities. Um, we've done everything from build ramps, wheelchair ramps, to fixing, making handicapped bathrooms. We've gotten some companion dogs for some children. Um, we do a special Christmas thing for the entire families of about five or six groups um, at Christmas time. So it just goes on and on. We've done we've done a lot to, in the community. We've done a lot in Northeast Ohio. And um, actually, what happened with this was I, I'm always trying to think of ways to raise more money. And I, all these things were were in our home. Uh, and I said to my wife once, you know, I said this really it does mean a lot to me. But I said if we can, you know, get make some good money from this, and if it helps one one child, then it's worth it. So with that, um, a good friend of mine 
started coming down here um, hour and a half ride from where he lives in Ohio and just helping me out and categorizing everything and getting it all done and labeled and put together. And then uh, Brandon sent a, a van from New York. We loaded everything up and now it's going on. You know, John, how have you been able to be so resilient in life? I mean, you talk about curveballs in life. You have come back from so many things that a lot of people wouldn't be able to come back from. Well, obviously, the hardest thing is losing both of our sons. Um, and to that, I, I tell friends, I say, you know, you have to make a choice in life. And it's not something you can do immediately after. But <clears throat> at some point, come to terms and say, OK, I can let it change me as a person and, and be of no use to my wife, to my other daughters, to friends, to family, or say, you know what, um, things happen in life and it's not that God does them, it's God's strength, I think, that helps us get through them. But you eventually have to say, why not me? And with that, you just say, okay, no, one's, no day is ever going to be the same but I'm just going to take them, make the most of them as they come and do the best I can, be the best person I can. You know, you were behind the plate when Barry Bonds hit number 756. Right. Um, Roy Holiday pitching a no-no. You were part of that in the playoffs. I think uh, some fans, uh, of course, know about that. More recently, uh, Don Larson, the only other person to do that, of course, pitching the per perfect game in the World Series. Uh, Red Sox clincher in 2013. And then what a way to exit with the World Series in 2016. Of all those highlights, is there one that you say to yourself, I'm so happy that I got a chance to be involved in that particular game? It would probably be the World Series in 16. Um, being Cleveland near here, and that was Michael's, Michael's team, and he and Terry Francona were so close. I have one story, though, if I can share with you. When people say, like, what are the greatest moments in baseball? After John passed away, um, we were, he, he died in our arms at our place in Florida. We um, came back to Ohio for the burial. And then shortly after, my wife said, you know, there's really nothing else we can do here. Why don't we go back down to Florida, you know, and, and get, try to get on with our lives? And I was scheduled um, in Sarasota. And I was scheduled to work the bases. The Yankees were playing there. And I uh, thought, you know, if I'm going to do this, I need to work the plate and, and, you know, challenge myself to see how I handle things. So I did, and that day, Buck Showalter came out with the lineup cards and um, brought basically the starting, the starting team. Um, you know, they were, they were all out there. All, all the guys from that year, were, they all came out. And I, I literally, you know, to tell me how sorry they were about John's passing and literally had tears in my eyes at home plate. And that, that's when I knew, you know, I'm um, part of a very special family you know, people on field, whether it's trainers, whether it's umpires, whether it's players, it's that on family group. And um, that was one of the most special moments of my career. John, great story. I mean, the auction will be available through November 14th. What is the ultimate goal in trying to help so many of these and uh, these families, just basically empowering them to believe that there is hope from the curveballs of life? Always. And, and to see the looks on children's faces and, and parents when, you know, we know firsthand that's, that's one thing I think that makes it so special is Denise and I, we know firsthand what it's like to face the curveballs of life and um, to be able to help these people to make their, make their lives better, easier. And, and a lot of times illnesses are terminal, but it's just that, that quality of, um, providing that space in their life where you can make things as good as possible, um, providing them with the things that we do along with talking with certain people. So our goal is to hopefully make enough money in this auction that the Magical Michael is going to go on forever. John, a great umpire and an even uh, greater man. I think all of the things that you're doing right now to try to help people and to highlight some of the things um, – uh, that are going on. It's, it's kind of something that I think all people can aspire to to try to do right now, especially considering all that's going on in the world. Yeah, there is so much going on right now. And if we uh, all maybe step back and, and go out of our way to say hello to somebody and, and make, make their day a little bit better, it would help all of us. John, I appreciate you taking the time today and best of luck with the auction. We definitely encourage people to uh, log on to check out some of these items and to support a good cause. Thanks again so much for taking the time, John. Best of luck. My pleasure. Thank you, Bobby.